Let's bring in uh, Haggai El Ad, who joins us now live from Jerusalem. He's the director of Beth Salem, an Israeli non governmental organization in the occupied territories. Uh, you were listening to what uh, Peter Lerner was saying there. Whether you give people 57 seconds, 15 minutes, an hour, is the targeting of homes and medical centers acceptable under international humanitarian law? Absolutely not. The tactic that is being used by the IDF targeting the very homes of individuals of Hamas or from the Islamic Jihad, that tactic in and of itself is illegal. And it is no coincidence that we're seeing the rising number of civilian casualties that result of the usage of this tactic. So let's just clear this up before we, before we move any further. What does constitute an acceptable target under international humanitarian law? If uh, it is a military target, such as a rocket launcher, for instance, uh, or where uh, missiles are being hidden, uh, these are military targets. The IDF has, is now using a new language, uh, sounds a bit Orwellian. Uh, they don't call the homes of uh, Hamas individuals homes. They call them uh, operational infrastructure. And according to uh, IDF data, that was published by the IDF spokesperson, approximately 10% of the number of uh, um, army strikes uh, in the first, I think, four days uh, of the operation in Gaza, about in, in about 70 occasions, have been strikes against homes of uh, individuals of Hamas or from Jihad. Now, what adds pain to injury, and in this case uh, adds casualties, horrific casualties in Gaza, uh, is the impl implementation of this, of this me method. But even if it were to be used perfectly, quote unquote, I feel uncomfortable using this language myself, that wouldn't deny the very illegality, according to international humanitarian law, of the very notion of going after the homes of these individuals. Uh, what are we to make of, of the so-called warning knock? Uh, indicating that the Israeli army uh, knows that civilians may be inside a target, doesn't it? I mean, militarily, it, it, it defeats the object, surely. It is, you know, no, supposedly what we're seeing are precision strikes and, and so on, but you have to, one has to think about that term uh, and be reminded by, by the images that, that you've shown all of us uh, only a few, a few minutes ago and the terrible civilian casualties that we're seeing in, in Gaza. Um, sometimes there are also phone calls, um, there is the, the warning shot, uh, but we're talking about buildings that in many cases have a few, three floors, four floors. Uh, there is a number of apartments in the building. People don't necessarily always understand that the first uh, missile, the small missile, uh, is a warning. Uh, sometimes they return to the house. Sometimes there isn't enough time for everyone to run outside of the building. There are old people, there are young babies, and so on and so forth. And what we're seeing is a rising number of instances in which terrible civilian casualties result of the usage of this tactic. And, and Haggard, just very briefly, because we're, we're running out of time here, what can organizations such as yours do to ensure that the Israeli army is, is held to account if, it's, if it does indeed breach humanitarian law? Yeah. We uh, have unfortunately uh, gained much experience in documenting, documenting uh, such military operations in Gaza. As everyone knows, this is not the first time, this is not the second time. Uh, we document, we report, we have staff in Gaza, courageous people working at these hours, helping us document the details of these instances. Uh, and we will follow up, but we don't wait uh, only for the follow-up. It's important for us to say at this very time when these attacks are happening uh, to pronounce their illegality. Haggai, good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed. Haggai Elad there from Bethlehem.